Welcome. I am Professor Nathanson. This is Math 226, Vector Calculus. And um, we are teaching this course uh, using the Pearson MyLab software, <coughs> which includes the textbook. Uh, I would guess many of you have used the software already for either Calc 1 or Calc 2. Um, but the first thing you have to learn is how to log into the MyLab um, and open up the course, Math 226. Um, what I'm going to do in these uh, lectures is go over the material that's being covered in the text. Um, the lecture is hosted on YouTube. All the access information is on the Blackboard website for this course. Uh, and during our regular class sessions, which will be on Zoom, um, Monday, Wednesday at 11 o'clock, uh, I will review some of the material for a second time, answer questions, and help you with uh, any homework problems or other problems you uh, uh, want to ask about. Um, this is a hybrid class, and... Um, and most of our work will be on Zoom. Uh, there may be some sessions on campus, may some problem sessions, but uh, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Since we do have an online textbook, which is a quite a good textbook, I'm going to open the textbook now and experiment. Uh, what I'm going to see is whether it works just to go through the textbook page by page in the sections that we're covering and just explain what is going on. Um, um, we don't usually, I don't usually have a textbook online. Usually I write out everything by hand, but a printed text is certainly a lot cleaner and definitely easier uh, to read. So let me switch to the textbook, which is right here. And <clears throat> We start in chapter 13, Vectors in the Geometry of Space. And the first two lessons in the syllabus and the first two lessons we cover are sections one and section two of the, of the book of chapter 13. Section 13.1 is on vectors in the plane, in the XY plane, so that's two dimensional vectors. And the next lecture will be on section 3.2, which is vectors in space, three-dimensional space. So let's begin. Um, so a vector in the plane, you can think of as an arrow. The arrow points in a certain direction and it has a certain length. So associated with every vector in the plane are two quantities, the length or the magnitude of the vector and the direction. So for example, if you look at these three vectors in the picture, vectors A and vector C seem to be pointed in the same direction and to have the same length or magnitude. Vector B is pointing in a different direction and its magnitude or length is different. It looks smaller than the other two. Uh, <coughs> when you look at a vector as an arrow in the plane, this point is the tail and the arrowhead is the head. So you can think of a vector as going from a point that's the tail to the point that is the head. And so if the tail is at point P and the head is at point Q, here is the vector PQ. And this is the way it's written, PQ with this arrow over it. And this means the vector, the straight line or the arrow with the tail at P and the head at Q, just this, this arrow in the plane. And sometimes we write vectors as in this form, PQ with an arrow. Sometimes we just use a letter. Usually it's a boldface letter like a U or a V to indicate the vector. So here in section 13.4, we have a vector U and a vector V. They're located at different points but as vectors, they're equal. We say two vectors are equal if they have the same direction and the same length, 
regardless of where in the plane they're located. So the vector u is equal to the vector v. They are located at different places. They are the same vector. So this is summarized in this box. Uh, vectors are quantities that have both length and magnitude, length, both length and mag both length, which is another word for magnitude, and direction. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude in the same direction. If you just have a magnitude but not a direction, then you're talking about a number. And in the language of vectors, a number is called a scalar. So a scalar is just a number. It has a size, a magnitude, but it does not have a direction. And there's always the strange thing, which is called the zero vector, which is a vector whose length is zero and has no direction. Uh, just like the number zero is neither positive nor negative. So there are different operations you can perform on vectors. The simplest is scalar multiplication. So you take a number that is a scalar c in a vector v, and the scalar multiplication of v by c, and this is the way it's denoted, c times v. This is a scalar multiple of v. It's the vector that has the same direction as v, at least if c is positive, but the length changes by the absolute value of c. So you can see it very clearly in this picture. Here is the, is the vector v. If you multiply it by the scalar three, you get a vector in the same direction that is parallel, but the length is three times as long. If you vector, if you multiply a vector by minus one, it's the same magnitude, but the opposite direction. So instead of going from here up to here, it goes from here down to here. So here I'm taking the vector v and multiplying it by the scalar negative two, minus two. That changes the length by two, and it changes the direction. It points in the opposite direction. Oh. If you take the vector v and multiply it by the scalar a half, you simply get a vector in the same direction, but half as long. And two vectors are called parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other. So even the vector minus 2v and the vector 3v are parallel because one is a scalar multiple of the other. So here is a nice picture of the plane. This is the origin. And here's a vector u, which is horizontal. And here's a vector v, which makes an angle of roughly pi over four radians with the horizontal. If you take the points p and q as they're pictured, the vector from p to q has one is length one and is the same direction as u. So the vector pq is equal to u. The vector qp is the same length as u, but in the opposite direction. So the vector qp is minus one times u or minus u. qr, that's the vector from q up to r, that's in the same direction as v, but twice as long. So in terms of v, the vector qr is equal to two times v. rs, starts at R and ends at S, that's parallel to U. It's three times as long, but it goes in the opposite direction. So the vector RS is equal to minus three times U. So that's geometrically what happens with scalar multiplication. The two other operations on vectors in the plane that we introduced right away are addition and subtraction. You can add two vectors. And this is very important. If you take an elementary physics, <clears throat> you've already seen this when you add forces, uh, forces a vector. Uh, so here we have two vectors, u and v. And how do you add them? So the first thing you do is you move u or v so that the tails of the two vectors are at the same place. So I move u and v, and here is u, so, sorry, 
Uh, yes. So here is U and here is V. The tails are at the same place. So I have U and I have V. I can make a parallelogram with the size U and V. So the parallelogram looks like this. And the sum of the vector U and V is the vector, which is the diagonal of this parallelogram. It starts here and goes up to here. <laughs> this is called the parallelogram rule for vector addition. There's also a triangle rule. You get the same vector, it's just a different way to describe it geometrically. Here you have the vectors u and v. You write u, and then you move v to a vector parallel to itself, v, where the tail of v is at the head of u. So now you have u and then v. And if you draw the arrow from the tail of u to the head of v, you get a triangle. And that's this line, which is you've just drawn, is the sum of u plus v. You get exactly the same vector as the parallelogram rule. It's just two different ways geometrically to describe the same thing. So this is addition of vectors. Subtraction of vectors, if you take u minus v, this is defined as taking u and adding to it the vector minus v. So here we have u and here we have v. <clears throat> so minus v is the direction, same magnitude, is the vector, same magnitude as v, but in the opposite direction. So if this is v going up, here is minus v going down. And we move minus v, so its tail is at the head of u, and then when you add u and minus v by the triangle rule, this is what you get, u minus v. So u minus v, this is the vector u minus v. So if you want to, um, no, let's just look at these examples. This is really the most useful thing. So here I have a vector in the plane. Here is 3v. Here is 2w. If I want to add them, I put the tail of 2w at the head of 3v. 3v plus 2w. This is the vector you get, 3v plus 2w. That's what it looks like. If w is going up like this, minus w is going down, parallel in the opposite direction. And 3v minus w is this vector, either by the triangle rule or by the parallelogram rule. So, it's useful to give coordinates to vectors. And there's a standard way to do this. Um, so if you take your vector and you put its tail at the origin, the intersection of the x and y axes, and for the coordinates of the, of the head of the vector, the point v1, v2, this is called the position vector, where the vector is in what's called standard position. And it's given by the coordinates v1, v2. So if, you, if you're given a vector in the form v1, v2, that means the vector whose tail is at the origin and whose head is at this point in the plane. And v1 is the x component and v2 is the y component of the vector. And two position vectors are equal if and only if their coordinates are exactly the same. How long is a vector? Well, there's a nice formula for the magnitude of a vector, or uh, also for the um, length of a vector between two points. And this is really just the Pythagorean theorem. So this is something you've known uh, forever. Suppose I take two vectors, P and Q, and their standard coordinates for P or x1, y1, and for Q or x2, y2. 
and I look at the vector from P to Q. So the coordinates of this vector are x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. And the distance between them, and this is just the Pythagorean theorem, is the following. So just look at it like this. Here's p at x1, y1. Here's q at x2, y2. Here's the vector between them. I can draw a right triangle. I can go horizontally from x1 to x2. That difference is x2 minus x1. I can go vertically from y1 to y2. That distance is y2 minus y1. I have a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem says that the sum of the squares of the legs is the square of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the length from P of the vector PQ. So the length from PQ, the length of the vector PQ, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the sides of this right triangle. The base is x2 minus x1. The height is y2 minus y1. So this is the formula for the distance between two points in the plane, or the length of a vector with coordinates v1, v2. So you should do a few problems. There are certainly problems in the homework about this, just to make sure you master the calculations. Here we have three points in the plane, 0, 0, that's the origin, minus 3, 4, and 6, 5. Find the components of magnitude of the following vectors. So the vector OP is the vector from the origin to minus 3, 4. So its coordinate vector is minus 3, 4. And its magnitude, you take the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates, is 5. If you look at the vector from p to q, the x coordinate is goes from minus 3 to 6. So from minus 3 to 6 is 9. The y coordinate goes from 4 to 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. So the y coordinate is 1, right? 6 minus minus 3 is 9. 5 minus 4 is 1. The magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates. That's the square root of 82. In terms of coordinates, if u1, u2 are the coordinates of u and v1, v2 are the coordinates of v, you add two vectors by adding their coordinates. You subtract two vectors by subtracting the coordinates. And you multiply a vector u by a scale or c by multiplying each coordinate by c. So in the plane, r stands for the real numbers. 2 means there are two dimensions, x and y directions. So this is called r2. This is, this is the definition of the of addition and subtraction of vectors and scale or multiplication in r2. So here are some more exercises. Take the vector minus 1, 2 and the vector 2, 3. What is the sum of the vector u plus v? If you add coordinates, you get 1, 5. What is the length of that vector? Square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared or square root of 26. That's all it is. No. What is called a unit vector is any vector whose length is one. So unit vector, unit means one, means a vector of length one. So there are infinitely many vectors you can draw on the plane that have length one. You could take a circle around the origin of radius one and any vector from the origin to any point on that circle is a unit vector. But there are two very special unit vectors. They are the unit vector in the x direction that's the vector i, <clears throat> boldface uh, letter i. The coordinates are 1, 0. And there's the unit vector in the j direction. That's the vector whose coordinates are 0, 1. So this is standard across all mathematics. i is a unit vector in the x direction. j is a unit vector in the y direction.
And if you want to write a vector as a linear, as a, in terms of these unit vectors, the basic unit vectors, here's an example of how to do it. Take the vector three, four. That's the vector three, zero plus zero, four. The vector three comma zero is three times the vector one, zero. The vector zero, four is four times the vector zero, one. But one, zero is I and zero, one is J. So one way to write the vector three, four in terms of this, the basic unit vectors is three I plus four J. And in general, if you have a vector V1, V2, you can write it as V1I plus V2J. So these two basic vectors are fundamental. They're very simple, but it's fundamental. And here are some examples of writing vectors in terms of the unit vectors. Actually, these are the two examples I just discussed. If you have any non-zero vector, one way to construct from it a unit vector in the same direction is simply scalar multiplication by one over the length of the vector. So if you take the vector v that is non-zero, calculate its length, and take one over v, one over the length of v, that's a number, a scalar times v, this vector has unit length. This is now a unit vector. And given any vector v, there are exactly two unit vectors parallel to it, one in the same direction, v over the length of v, and one in the opposite direction, minus v over the length of v. So here we have a table that lists properties of vector operations. Uh, it's very similar to addition, subtraction of numbers, for example. Vector addition is commutative. For any two vectors, u plus v equals v plus u. You have an associative law, u plus v plus w is u plus the vector v plus w. If you add zero to any vector, you just get the same vector. If you take a vector v and you add its negative, minus v just means the vector v scale or multiplied by minus one, you get zero. This is like saying three minus three is zero. You have distributive laws for vectors. If you multiply a vector by the scale or zero, you get the vector zero. If you multiply the, the vector zero by any scalar, it still is the zero vector. If you multiply any vector by the number one, you don't change the vector, just like one times three is three for numbers. And you also have <coughs> an associate, associative property for scalar multiplication. A times CV is AC times V. So now you know the basic algebra of two-dimensional vectors, of vectors in R2 or vectors in the plane. And there are a number of examples of applications of vectors. Oh. The most common examples are in physics, where you're adding forces. And those will come up in the exercises. So that is section chapter... 13, section 1, and that is lesson 1. So this will be posted on YouTube.